all day. Money, power, respect. Three the hard way. And, and, and right here, while, while we doing this conversation, uh, Miss McGee, you are a homeowner. Uh, Miss Juanita is a homeowner. And uh, uh, Miss Tiffany is is now has um, purchased a restaurant and, you know, rent out your property or whatever it is that you got going on. And could you ladies speak to some of those steps that it took for you to uh, to be able to do that and the do's and the don'ts and the rights and the wrongs and, and things of that nature, that um, the steps on that journey where it took you to get there? <laughs> How long is your show? Oh, <laughs> 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 um, keep, okay. keep keep it brief. Now, I, I would say just go versus renting versus owning your own home. Like, what's the okay. difference and the benefits of it? <laughs> Taxes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, to just be real about it, I mean, the only, outside of the comfort of knowing that if I continue to make these monthly payments, this is mine, um, outside of a renter's location where it's never yours, it's someone else's, I, honestly, owning your home outside of the benefits of just the personal gratification of being in your own space, it's somewhat is harder to be a homeowner than it is a renter. Because when everything that potentially can happen in the house falls on you in your pocket, it makes it that mm -hmm. much more harder, honestly, um, to me personally. So I can't speak for everybody else. Um, some of the steps, I mean, I applied for, I mean, well, let's, let's go back first off. Um, I believe in academia. So I went to school. Um, I, I got the degrees, I, I went that way and I, it was expressed to me very at a young age, you know, keep your name because at the end of the day, that's all you have. So even though I had to ride the student loans and the credit card to get the degrees that I have, it was the very first thing that I focused on when I had a full-time job was to build my name back up. So it mm. took efforts of not going on trips and not getting the Jordans or not doing this, this, and this to say, hey, I can put a couple of hundred dollars more on this credit card that I had to use while in school to get that clear. So my name did mean something. So as far as, I guess, the differences to me personally was the assurance that it was mine. It, I mean, I think <laughs> financially wise, it's a hell of a lot more expensive to own your own home than it is to rent it. Because if something happens, you call the you're the landlord, hey, you need to come fix this. Whereas I have to figure out if the plumbing's messed up, how to get that fixed. Not to say it's a bad thing, but it is more stressful. It is more expensive. So I'm not telling people not to do it. Just be conscious of what you're stepping into when you're looking for home ownerships. I mean, it's not that hard to get a loan if you have a solid financial background. You have a job, a decent credit score at this point, not even a good one, because they're willing to give you some money a decent credit score, and you want, you found a property that you like. That's basically a nutshell of what you need to get a, a house loan now. I mean, so I don't know if I answered your question or not, but that's my thing. Okay. okay. You're you making me want to be homeless right now. But go, <laughs> <laughs> go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead, Juanita. Um, okay, as far as the whole rent and owning thing, I totally get what she's saying. Um, it is, it can be more expensive to be a homeowner, but some of the perks of that is real estate taxes. When you go to file them taxes, you, you got a lot of stuff you write off. You end up getting a lot of the money back if you did any type of home improvement on your place. Um, so you do end up getting a lot of money, a lot more money back for taxes. So I do love that part. Um, and with the, the renting, like she said, it's not yours. You're going to always have to worry about what your landlord wants you doing, what your neighbor snitching on you doing, who you can have there, how long. It's all types of little things like that. Um, but I think for me, what, what took me to get to where I was, I grew up in a family where, I hate to say it, it was a lot of strong women. I didn't have a lot of men 
you know, in our family. They but drove them away. Women, they drove them away. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> they should have been able to hang. Woman, okay. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> if you if you got good sense, you stick with you a strong woman, okay? But um, you know, watching my mother and my grandmother, my my grandmother for one, at like, I don't know, maybe I was 17, 18, she put me on one of her credit cards, okay? So for me, when I got to 2022, 20, 23, my credit score was 700, you know, out the gate. Because she put me on a credit card. She made me authorize you. To, so she, she didn't necessarily have to help me financially, but her just doing that. And that's another thing that black people don't know that a lot of other races do for their children. Um, they, they help them get their credit up at a young age so they're able to get these things, okay? So I bought my first house at 24 years old. Okay, I was, I had, you know, post office. TSP, you know about it, Dion. Like you said, putting money into a, a fund and they matching it. And it's a lot of programs out here right now, you know, that has been our last couple years. NACA, you can go through there, you can get your house, no money down. Renting a house, you could be paying 50, especially in the market right now, two bedroom, $1,500. You can have your whole three bedroom house with a yard, with a, a shed in the back, with a finished full basement for the same thing, not having to worry about nobody telling you when you got to get out and everything like that. And also something that I, you know, really didn't want to do until just recently when I bought this house, this is my second property actually. Um, warranty. You know, black folks, we don't believe in warranties, okay? You get a home warranty, anything that go break, that break down in your house, you pay a $65 copy, they going to come fix it or replace it. I believe, so, in war I believe in warranties. I got a warranty on my Xbox, my PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. All of that So stuff. you can get you a warranty under everything in your house, cost you $500 for the year. That's worth the investment. So if you take the time to do the research to get your credit score where it is, put a little money away, I mean, to, to put that down payment down or find the program uh, that are going to give you the first time. I did real estate too, so I know, you know, kind of both sides. So find the programs that are going to give you the money down for the first time buyer. You know, make you a good investment like that. And, you know, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth that peace of mind, and it'll be, you know, worth that that tax break at the, you know, the beginning of the year next year. You get that little change back, you know. So, I I like it, you know. Okay, T Tiffany, speak speak to us about your, uh, you know, your restaurant situation, renting, owning, the best move for you. So I'm currently renting um a 1500 square foot space for a restaurant um as of right now i think that would be the best option for me as a new business owner because i'm not i'm just getting into it um i'm not sure if that's where i want to stay so i don't want to make a big purchase and buy at the time because i don't know if my restaurant is going to be there for however many years um some of the steps that i took to get to um be able to i guess afford the restaurant to be able to make that big step because it's a really big financial like decision um i had to make sacrifices i had to cut certain things down i had to cut down at one point get my hair done i had to learn how to do it myself um shopping clothes shoes things of that nature it's just like certain sacrifices that you have to make in order to be able to um save and be able to get something to help you in your future because the reason why i got my restaurant is so that i can um I won't have to basically work for anybody and have to be able to make my own money. And eventually I do want to purchase a space, um, more, more so a space that has more than one unit in it so that I can rent out to other people, which would be good for revenue as well. So I won't have to pay rent to pay for my own space to other people who are renting the property. They'll be basically paying for the space itself. But it's, it just takes a lot of sacrifices, I believe, to be able to, um, save up money and it's not about how much you, it's not about like how much you save as long as you're saving something I think that's that's what matters people a lot of people they think that oh I can't save this because they're thinking of like big numbers you know I can't put up a thousand I can't put up two thousand but I mean you put up what you have you get fifty dollars put that up 
You got 75, put that up every week. Whatever it is that you got, you just save. Okay. Go ahead, Derek. Uh, I mean, I, I want to condemn, I mean, I want to uh, commend the young ladies. I think y'all are some powerful women, but I'm just going to speak a little truth to power. So, you know, uh, on a personal note, I believe that, you know, owning a home is great. And I, I guess it depends on what region of the country you stay in, but, you know, somewhere like Chicago, you know, I'm more inclined to, to invest in some rental property and things of that nature to generate that revenue. But truth to power is, you know, if, as long as we have a mortgage, then we don't own anything. As long as we paying taxes, we really don't own it. That's why we have 15, 20 year mortgage. So, I mean, it's good to think in those terms. So that's why I always think in, in the terms of investing money uh, to, to allow it to work for me. So, I mean, I think owning a home, um, now I wouldn't own a home here in Chicago, maybe in the South, that's something I do uh, because of, like I said, of different uh, geographical location. But in the city, I'd be more inclined to purchase property to rent because you know mm -hmm. we still gonna have a mortgage. So I mean, uh, I do some financial coaching and I do a lot of different types of things. So, um, but I think that's that's the key there is learning how to invest and let your money work for you. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go before you, uh, real. Um, see, see, I was thinking about the property thing as well. I was thinking really long. I was thinking really hard. Um, I, I have right now. I have X amount of dollars saved up, like where well, I could go out and buy, hell, maybe two properties where uh, somebody has, uh, you know, defaulted on the taxes or something like that. I, and I, ha I have the money set aside for those things. So right now, I I personally thought about buying a house and I'm looking at like 200000 250000 I feel like at this moment, the best decision for me would be to go buy something where someone didn't can't couldn't pay those taxes but the property mm -hmm. is paid for get it get a small loan from the bank repay that back and then rent that property out so that i can make money so i can start generating money for myself so i don't have something hanging over my head for 20 30 years i'm not against anyone getting a uh you know if you feel like a mortgage and you want that comfort that's what you want. Some people buy used cars. Some people buy new cars. You know what I'm saying? I can't fault anybody for doing what they want to do. But I know that the the goal that I'm trying to reach for me and my five children is to make money. So, so I'm making money so that that way I can pass that down to them. And they say, God damn it, my daddy was on this shit. You know, he was an asshole sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this nigga set me up right. You know what I'm saying? So. I want to do those type of things where I get, I can accumulate seven, eight, 10, 15 properties and just split it up here. These your two sons, these your two daughter, you know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. So that, that's what, I, my, what I'm what i striving for right now. That's that's my goal. And, and you know, another thing, like uh, Juanita was talking about, I don't know if it was Juanita or if it was Rashida, y'all was talking about the family thing and the, and the way the families help each other. I, you know, I, I talked about that with people and black people are so quick to uh, want their independence. But when you look mm. at Asian people, you look at the Mexicans, they will live together for 10 years until everybody has saved their goal and went out and, and bought that property where somebody owed the taxes, rehab it and rent it out and then they spread it out. But we don't want to do that. We just want to rent and go give a motherfucker our money, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. So my brother Dion, he know that all me and him, we always talk and I always tell him like we gotta buy these properties. Um, I know like some hot markets and stuff. I actually owned a house that I lived in and then I rented. Um uh, the reason why I don't I can't buy a house because I don't like to live in one place. I'm from Chicago, I moved to Wisconsin, I left there, moved to Arizona, I'm on my way up out of here. So I I wouldn't buy a house because I like to jump around. Now my next location, my wife, she want to stay there. So we might end up staying there. But me and him talk all the time about buying property, but I'm a big um, believer in buying property and rent it out to, just to create a cash flow. And then another thing I believe in, like my whole goal is to set up the next generation. Like my daughter, she 10, and I teach her about financial service, financial literacy all the time, how money work, what you need to do with it and all that. But my goal is to set up the next generation and i think that's where we miss the beat in our communities is that um 
So we already kind of born behind the eight ball or whatever people want to say or white people got us put down. So <clears throat> one of the easiest ways I believe, and um, a lot of people afraid to do this, but one of the easiest ways I believe is to create, to set your family up for something you didn't have is to have life insurance. Like, oh, for sure. We all go leave this place, right? So if I leave right now today, a million dollars to my daughter. I ain't have a penny when I was born, but to her, she'll be set up and just stuff I done taught her alone and hopefully she make great decisions going forward. But something that small is so important because how many of us have lost family members and we don't want people to die just to inherit money, but we know they go die anyway, right? Everybody can't go out and buy a house. Everybody ain't fortunate hey. enough to or, or how many people, how many times somebody in our family has died and then we have to set up a GoFundMe or no, get a exactly. collection together yeah. to, to bury their bum oh, ass because they couldn't or, pay for life insurance. Yeah, or, or something like that. And even like, um, you know, like we as black people, you know, a lot of us, I ain't gonna say everybody, we think we gonna live forever and we think we gonna be young forever. So we don't, a lot of us don't even think about getting it. And like one of the ladies said, I forget, she was like, you know, you got car insurance and cell phone insurance, but no life insurance, right? So why not? Like you said, I think it was Juanita or somebody said, uh, you trying to buy your kids everything you didn't have instead of teaching them stuff you didn't know. So why not set that next generation up? Because unless we break that uh, that family curse of the same stuff going over and over, people getting jobs, working till they die, um, you know, we they tell us get a job and work how many ever years, right? So you become mm -hmm. 18 and you work till you're 65. The life expectancy is 70. That's kind of the reason why I stopped believing in buying a house and wanted to buy at the rent. Because you figure if the average person buy a house at 30, and you get a 30-year mortgage and you die at 70, you never was free. You know what I'm saying? So I started thinking, like, how can we make our money work for us? And I think that's a big thing is, like, how do we make the money that we make actually work? Like, it's good to put our money in a bank and stuff, but it's just really sitting there. So the bank making mm -hmm. money off the money we put there, but what are we making? So yeah, it's still good to put money in the bank, but we need to figure out ways to create where our money is working for us, working for us while we sleep, uh, over here making percentage on investments and all type of stuff like that. Personally, I think it's really about where you're at in life as well because yep. priorities change and let's let's i mean as uh, going through college my priority was to get my education but after mm -hmm. getting my education then my priorities change so i totally agree with you know everybody's point that you know there's nothing wrong with getting a certain thing or reaching a certain goal that you want whether it's materialistic or if it's house or hell you're getting a new boob job it's basically <laughs> up to you to strive. The point I guess I'm trying to make is to have a goal. I mean, a lot of our people suffer, in my opinion, because we have no direction. Mm -hmm. And by, and we just kind of out here allowing life to dictate to us which way we want to go. And I guess for those who don't have an option or don't have an influence in their life, that's fine. But I feel like maybe if we had some goals set, and that, you know, something that we could work towards, you have a lot of the younger generation and not even the younger generation, a lot of our people in general working towards something. Now I can say home ownership, the, the White House, the picket fence, the dog, the half a kid or whatever it is was my goal. And that's right. fine. Where someone else may be into the investments, into the flipping houses or whatever. So I'm not here to knock anybody's mm -hmm. point. All I'm just saying is that we suffer so much because we allow people to tell us what our money is going to do. The stimulus check that they just sent out, how many of us put a hundred dollars up of that money? How many I of mean, us did how many of us didn't get one? I, <laughs> well, maybe the better question is why? Yeah. Yeah, why? So okay, so we're talking financial literacy. Why didn't you get a federal check? They don't like me. It's because I'm black. Well, that, that's another story. Lord have mercy. But my point <laughs> is, the whole topic is, you know, maybe if we had some goals and you had some people who were, like you said, willing to pool their resources, then maybe we could achieve something. It's just, I think personally, we, a lot of us just out here living. They feel like, you know, life is going to dictate the next step. And, and okay, whatever the hell it goes, left to the right, I'm going to roll with right. it. Well, others right. of us have things that we're working towards, and that's what we see, whether good or bad. This is what I'm going to go after, hell or high water. This is what I'm going to achieve. 
So maybe it's the person, maybe not just what they're know what they know or what they've been exposed to. Maybe it's just some want it and some don't really care about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I always say that too. Like what she was saying is uh like a lot of people wake up by accident. Like they just going yeah. on about life. And like she said, the goal thing is like really important. And and it is dependent on where you come from. Because me and Dion, we actually come from the same block. And it's like for me, it was like I refuse to go back to that. Like I refuse to go back to that. So that always been in the back of my mind pushing me, like I can't go back to that. And it is kind of like affected because in and where we grew up at, you know, everybody will remember it was one lady when you go say her name, but she had like seven kids and they would be the freshest kids in the neighborhood. And one day we went in their house, they didn't even have no beds, furniture, furniture, nothing. <laughs> Crazy. But they had tons of clothes and shoes. And we were just like, wow, like it was just eye opening. Like, you know what I'm saying? You think you got less than because you probably already, but you go in there and you're like, what the hell? So, right, I always had a bed to sleep in. Mm-hmm. And some things in the pot. Not, I'm sorry, but I you know, <laughs> things in the pot. Grandma <laughs> fed your beans and some hog neck or whatever you might call it. But we ate every night. So I mean, and I agree with you. Your upbringings have a lot to do with the human that you are now. Some of us didn't have to grind when we were kids, so you weren't exposed to what it was to be like to eat beans every night. So you know you didn't want to do that as a grown person. <laughs> no, you, I, I, hey, that, hey, that's hey. that's not that's not hey. necessarily true because I know some people that came from. Two fa- two uh, parent homes where the mother and the father was outstanding citizens, owned property and everything, and they are in prison. They are hey, selling Dion. pussy. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> I- I'm just saying it happens. Hey, those beans are like pork and beans that Dion. And I, just, I just I just think when we look at the, the, the <laughs> word literacy, when we think about the word literacy, we're talking about knowledge and information. So everybody don't have an opportunity. Saying. To get yep. information or knowledge or some of us just misinformed so once again i don't think that we can even uh, uh i don't think none of us have the authority to say who got goals and who don't have goals we have absolutely no idea what people think about every day or what they're exposed to and we know in the black community a lot of our people they're experiencing trauma some of it's vicariously and we know that we have a generational wealth gap between blacks and others so i think um uh, we have to inform ourselves first for those of us who came into some type of knowledge or information and quit shaming old people who may not have goals. Because the same way uh, 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 we see those people, we feel like we're doing well off. We know there are other and millions of people doing a hell of a lot better than us, and they look at us as insignificant. So well, I'm uh, not shaming anybody. I, I, I okay, mean, but I mean, you, you, keep, you keep mentioning that, that people don't have goals. Maybe they don't have goals. So my point is, I'm just saying we need to be cautious because we don't know what anybody have. I just think that some people, they, they may not be as privileged as to get the information in a timely fashion as others. So we have to be willing to reach out to those individuals opposed to, you know, uh, uh, just making blanket indictments. Well, I I guess I'm going to have to maybe agree but disagree on this point because I feel like in the communities and the areas that I grew up in, as you as you said, the information wasn't readily available to anybody. Okay, so there wasn't exactly somebody who was telling me, "Hey, you need to keep outside of family." Let me put the environment. The environment wasn't telling me, "Hey, you need to do this, do this, a do this, do this." So it was upon me and my family structure to instill that, but. I guess my thing is if two of us in the same community in the same house raised by the same two people can go left and right, I don't necessarily feel like it's my responsibility to cover you if you decide not to pursue your goal. Now, if you come to me and say, hey, can you help me? And I'm at a place where I can provide assistance, then okay, that's my choice. But I don't have a responsibility because we share the same race to take care okay, so, of it. and so, I'm not going to feel so, bad because you chose left and so, I but, chose right. But when we're speaking as a collective, so we're speaking as a collective, so my point is we're talking about uh, Black people, financial literacy in the Black community, and we're talking as a collective. It's not so much if a person chose left or chose right. My father couldn't read or write, and we all probably, I own land today that he, he passed down to me. You kind of follow mm-hmm. me? And, and him yeah. and my mother were separated for years, but when he did separate with her, he left me something. So my point is that as a collective, we're talking about as a collective, as, as black people, as a collective, a lot of us don't have those opportunity 
to get that information because we know there's a lot of systemic issues that's going on that's going to prevent us from getting the knowledge and for us to, to become organized and informed, rather than be going through the school system or whatever system you choose to go through. It's a systematic problem. It's not just a problem, a, a, a choice of a, a question of choice or goals or motivation. It's more of a systemic issue, in my opinion. All day, money, power, respect, three the hard way.